What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. In that last episode, we were working on that daybed area. It's turning out beautifully. We're gonna be doing a little bit more of that in this video, crazy privacy wall action. I don't even think you're ready for this. It's gonna be mind blowing. But we're also working on this Teco Block patio. It's gonna be slightly raised on this side because we have a grade change in the yard. So just a slight step from patio into yard, but we got a lot of new products that we haven't used before. We got just really some crazy stuff going on. So make sure you hit, make sure you hit, make sure you hit subscribe. Stay tuned. All right, so we're starting our wall construction here. This is gonna be two rows high and we're using a wall product that we haven't used before. We're using the Teco Block G-Force wall. Yeah. Can you feel those G-forces, baby? Pat, can you feel them? You can't even talk because the G-forces are so high. Anyway, showed you on the last project how we do our screed beds with this. Three ace clean stone. That's gonna be our setting bed. We just lay them right on there. It gets us nice and level. And then all we have to do, which Scooter's doing right now, is just go ahead, tap them in, slightly level them. They just need a tiny bit of love, right buddy? Yep. Don't we all. Ready to start setting these Tego Block slabs, and we have this vacuum lifter. Rented this off of uh, Timothy Center for Gardening. Best in the biz. How great's Tim? Pat, oh, the tell best. Him. Uh, Love that guy. It's just amazing. Love going there. We're gonna start setting these. We rented this off of him. It's gonna make it a lot easier because these are 100 millimeters thick, about three and a half inches, and they're about 16 by 32. So they're big boys. We have to set these so that we leave a gap for our West Mount border. Haven't told the guys yet, but they are a different thickness. <laughs> Just slightly different. These are 100 millimeters, those are 80 millimeters. It's not gonna be that hard. That's why I didn't wanna break it to them until now. Tony, you wanna? You wanna help me out here? We need to get the tape measure getting pulled out. Oh, this is good stuff. It's gonna be a nice little speed up session. You tight? 222 in half, 111. Okay, so we have most of our perimeter slabs on here, but we're separating it into fire pit area which is going to be herringbone with the sleek slabs so we're going to start by marking out our center point and we're going to work out from there so that we have even cuts on both sides so i'm going to make a mark at 111. all right now we just got to figure out what to do all right i'm going to start laying this out herringbone
Okay, so we have all of the Teco Block sleek slabs in here that are not gonna be cut. Now we're onto a bunch of cuts around the perimeter. So what I'm doing is walking around, gonna give Scooter a cut sheet so he can start cutting slabs because uh, it's gonna take a little bit. So we'll just have him working on that. So we got this new IQ saw. Got it about a month ago. It's the first time we're really getting to use it. It's awesome because it's got this sliding table. We can cut full slabs with it. It's got this guard that slides up. So especially on a thick paver, it hits that. This slides up out of the way. The best thing about it, it's completely dustless. No water, nothing like that. It just sucks. I don't know. I don't know how it works. It sucks the dust, I don't know, out of the air, I guess. Pat, do you know? Yeah, I, have no, I don't know how it works. Maybe magic, but check this out. All this dust, that's from like four or five slab cuts. Oh, why did I just do that? Now it's all over my hands. Let's see it in action. Pretty impressive. See that lack of dust in the air? Lack of dust in my lungs? You know what else is cool? What else is cool? Blade Tell never us. gets hot. Blade never gets hot. You can touch it. It's cold. I don't know how that works. I, that's the one thing I actually don't understand at all. I don't understand any of it. <laughs> I have no clue how this thing works, but I know how to use it. So here is an area where we're gonna have that Westmount border. You can see our setting bed is just set at the height of the sleek pavers. Now, you can see we gotta come up that quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. It's super easy when it's on an edge like this. Just take some of our setting bed. We're just gonna bring it over. Raise up that grade a little bit. And come a little bit higher. We want to be sitting above it a tiny bit, and then we take our dead blow hammer. And when it's on a border like this, you can really bring up your setting bed a lot. See how much higher that is? Boom. Now when you're doing an inlay that's in between two sections of this paver, you're gonna to wanna to get it pretty close because the stone's gonna have nowhere to go. When it's on a border, you can really bring it up a lot higher and you'll be able to beat it into place. Little tip for you there with uneven paver installation. Next step here, compact your pavers. I already started compacting and you can see, check out this section. Looks nice and flat. I ran the compactor over it one time. Over here, get down low so they can see some inconsistencies here, especially the one right in front of you. Look at that one. Now with this clean stone base, instead of using sand, we're using that 3 8 clean stone as our setting bed, which is a little bit of a coarser material. So when you just lay these on top, it's not gonna sit perfectly level. As long as your base and your setting bed is screeded at the same height when you compact it, they will all consolidate and be the same height, but you'll have some inconsistencies before you compact it, especially with larger slabs like this, like the sleek, you're gonna have, you know, maybe just like three little stones on this side that are sticking up a tiny bit and it's making this side come up a little bit more. So we'll compact it, it's gonna consolidate our setting bed and everything's gonna be nice and flat. Like my ass. Insane, got no brain. Now that our base is done, we're building firebox, I guess. 
I guess that's what you would call it. We're building vertical pavers. Vertical pavers. We've got the sleek paver. We're building it into a vertical box. Not going to actually see any of this because we're covering it with West Mount. Do you know what's going on? Uh, no. So we have these sitting vertical and they're, they're kind of sitting on our base here. And what are we doing there? We are putting steel and blue screws and glue to make that inside corner locked in for justice. So we're doing that in all four corners. We're getting it locked in for justice. And uh, then we're gonna get to some fun stuff. You excited? Very excited. You seem excited. I'm excited. I don't know where you come up with this stuff. I'm losing my mind. Guys losing it. All right, so now that we have this fire box all done, it's all locked in for justice with that angle iron. We're doing these corners. Pat, come check this out. So we've essentially ripped down the G-Force to four inches on these corners, and then we've ripped them on a 45 degree angle. This is probably uncharted territory here, but we have these going up, and these are kind of gonna be like pillars on the corners, and then we're gonna have a double herringbone with the west mount inside of here and you can see it's going to leave us with a nice little reveal so we kind of have like this pedestal we have these columns and then we have another reveal with the west mount let's show you how we're cutting these on a 45 degree angle and this is after we've already ripped these things down to four inches so a lot of crazy stuff going on with this once you get your first rip done you use that as your template so that's cut at 45 degrees and you end up cutting through come over here pat See the kerf that it makes. So to set this up for the next piece, I can just line up my kerf with you know the blade and all that good stuff. Line your piece up. Set it down. Eyeball test. We're good to go. All right, so we're on to the last detail here before the caps go on. And you can see we just have this double west mount inlay. We have it set back from these corners a little bit, so it looks really nice. And all we're doing is just gluing it to the sleep and also gluing it to each other. So just being mindful that we're keeping everything nice and square on the same plane. What do you think of my outfit, by the way? They said I look like a uh, create your own character on Tony Hawk. Took that as a very good compliment. caps on here the rest was pretty much a wrap we got the caps on nice and glued locked in for justice we got this nice techo block insert in here this thing is ready for a fire we also got this thing poly sanded and cleaned up so that I could give you the grand tour now that it's all done so over here we have this little patio extension this was an add-on to the project for these vegetable beds now we have probably my favorite part the day bed come on No, I, I didn't mean I didn't mean like right next to me I meant like <laughs> give me some space all right so just hanging out literally hanging this thing is like the best freaking thing ever I love this if you're watching this let us build you like a hundred of these in your backyard it'll be beautiful check out our Milky Way Galaxy decor Got some lights in there, some different colored plugs. We were kind of going for that Milky Way Galaxy explosion there. I thought it turned out pretty awesome. Patio, another one of my favorite things. We've got the Techo Box Sleek, 
slab paver here in a herringbone with this kind of like walkway detail around the outside. Westmount border, HD2 plus baby, factory sealed. It's looking quite primo. Let's go. Decorator's deck, as far as the eye can see. It's a beautiful sight, isn't it, Pat? He's speechless, as am I. One of my favorite things is how this wraps around. We've got the steps that just cascade down into the yard and we've got this staggered lighting pattern. It looks really cool in wraparound steps like this. They're gonna have a tiny little dining table here. That is not here yet, but we do have two benches so you can kind of get the idea. We've got the bar top. Woo! Bar top seating is one of my favorite things to put into a design because this takes up about 20 square feet maybe. And what do we have? We've got five usable seats, high functionality, not a lot of space. I love it. Oh, hey, can you grab me a beer from over here? No problem, or a soft drink, whatever. Here we are in the sectional area, just straight chilling, baby. We got the shade sail above. So chill, dude. I'm like, yo. Another thing I really love about this are these post column wraps here that we did with the decorators, Kaya boards, five and a half inch deck board, solid and we didn't have any rips on these. Has a nice little reveal on here. Turned out beautiful. And this Kaya Costa combination, it's one of my favorites. So that's pretty much it for this vlog. We've got the patio done. Everything is finished up here. So time-lapse video will be coming shortly. And until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.